So right now we have a basic, basic, basic Redux application. We have a really simple reducer and a store with just one value for data. But that's not really a real world example because an application has much more than one piece of data for its values. You'll have an object that has much more information to it. So say you have a user, uh, my name is Will. My age is 35, getting up there. And then tweets will be an array of tweets. And so you'll want to now at this point act off of multiple pieces of information and you absolutely don't want one gigantic reducer because that'll be just a mess to maintain. So we're gonna actually combine multiple reducers that can be broken up into their own files. So let's pull in combine reducers from Redux. And then let's actually create multiple reducers here. So let's create user reducer. Let's pretend this is in its own file. And then this will receive state in actions. And we can make this an arrow function. There we go. So there's my user reducer. And then let's create a tweets reducer as well. So that's in its own file. Now we can combine those. Let's say then there's a third file, index.js or something, and that imports both of them and creates a reducer, const reducer equal combine reducers. And then we're gonna pass that in object. And the object's gonna basically say, what piece of data are we modifying? In this case, user. And which reducer function is going to handle that? The user reducer. So now what's something really cool is gonna happen. When the user reducer file fires, state right here will be this user object. So it will only be able to act on that user object. Whatever it returns gets set as the new value for the user piece of the state. When the tweets reducer fires, it receives whatever is set in tweets as state and whatever returns gets set as state again. And so when you move to combined reducers, and make sure I actually change this to reducers, uh, then you don't set your default values in here anymore. You set your default values in here, which is also nice. So, nice. so your default values are now set using ES6 default values or however you want to handle it. Uh, the user reducer right there, state equals, let's go name. You know, I just won't, I just won't pass anything. By default, that's just gonna be an empty object. You can set a lot of default values here, or you can set some kind of default values up here, and then you just make sure you return defaults or modify defaults. At any rate, you always have to return something in these functions. So we're gonna return state by default. So at the very least, we're gonna return empty brackets if no state gets passed in the first time. I hope that made sense. You'll basically get errors if a reducer ever returns nothing. That's gonna cause problems. So we've got our user reducer, and then tweets is going to fire the tweets reducer. And there's our setup now for multiple pieces. Let's go ahead and save. And then we got a bunch of store changed, but nothing happened. You can see tweets is an empty object and users an empty object. And tweets actually needs to be an empty array. There we go, tweets is an empty array. So now let's make sure that's right. Yep, tweets is an empty array, user's an empty object. So now we can actually fire some things off. We can change user, change user, and the payload will be will. Make that change name. Change name and change age. We'll change the age to 35. And now the user reducer can do a switch statement or if else statements, whatever it wants to do to modify that state. We'll do a switch this time. I think it's cleaner. And then let's do a change age as well. So we got change name, change age. I accidentally made that actions, didn't I? Let's make that just action. Fix that there as well. So the name's gonna be the action payload. If the action type is change name, this should look pretty familiar now if you've done flux of any kind. And then state age. There we go, so now we should be able to set our name and our age. 
Let's look at this and see what we got. We got a user, age is 35, name is Will. Excellent. But well, we got a problem here. Let's look back at this previous modification we made. And the user's age is still 35. Now, wait a minute. We did not set the age yet. How come the age is set here? Because what we're actually doing is bad. We are changing this. We are mutating the state object and returning the exact same state object. Instead, we want to never, ever, ever, ever mutate the state object. Instead, we always return a new state object. Now, you could do this in a couple ways. You could go uh, new state equals state. And then we modify that object and we always return new state. This approach definitely works, but I think the better approach is to make sure that where you're modifying the values, you simply make sure to do it in an immutable fashion. So let's go and change this to state. And then I would do this instead. I'd say state equals. So we're going to completely overwrite our state object. We're going to pull in all the values from state as it is. And then name is going to be action.payload. That will work. Now, if you put dot, dot, dot state afterwards, that will not work because we're going to set the name. And then we're going to overwrite the name with what it's currently. So you always want to make sure your destructuring happens at the beginning so you can overwrite the name value. So there we go. And let's go ahead and do the exact same thing with age. There we are. And so this will work. So we can go ahead, store changed. Let's look at our user, age 35. And our previous one, no age at all. Excellent. So then next year when I change my age to 36, we have 34. Nope, nothing, sorry. 35 and 36. And what's excellent about this, again, is this user reducer is not aware of the tweets portion of the data. It can't change the tweets portion of the data. Absolutely nothing can happen. Now, the tweets portion of the data could act on the change name event. This change name event might have consequences for both the user state and the tweet state. Maybe we have to go through every tweet and change the username. Totally fine. We can do that. We can also switch based off of change name and modify the tweets portion of the state. So one action can trigger multiple, multiple side effects that are all completely decoupled from each other. So that's how you break stuff apart. And if you were to actually move this into files, this would become a file for user reducers. This would become a file for tweets reducers. And then where you bootstrap your store, this would all happen in one file as well. So that's how you uh, combine multiple reducers into one. Let's look at the next big piece of Redux, and that's middleware.